Can you actually make food from a DS cookbook? Well, there's only one way to find out. There is a whole slew of weird Nintendo DS accessories and games, like a TV antenna for watching TV on the go, you know, before you could do that with your everyday device. Or there are also some healthcare accessories like a DS glucose monitor and a pedometer, all made to integrate the DS into your daily life. But did you know that the DS could be your personal chef too? Well, let me introduce you to the DS game, Personal Trainer Cooking Gourmet Made Easy. But this game, I'm going to continue calling it a game because frankly, I don't know what else to call it. But this game is from a personal trainer series of games that also included a walking game, which had that pedometer I mentioned earlier, as well as a math game. Though this one in particular helps you cook delicious dishes from around the world guiding you through each recipe step by step. And as cool as that sounds, it seems too good to be true. I mean, this is a gaming device for kids, right? Right? Also, remember when you used to actually get instruction booklets with games? Good times. But this game claims to do a lot, like create your grocery list, to show you how to do something via video, which I personally can't wait to see the quality of those, as well as have voice commands so I don't have to touch the DS while my hands are covered in bacon grease. Why will my hands be covered in bacon grease? Honestly, just kind of seems like something that would happen. But before we dive into this game, let me tell you about today's sponsor, Redbubble. Redbubble is an online marketplace that allows independent artists and designers to sell their own artwork, which you can then purchase and have printed on a bunch of different stuff, like t-shirts and sweatshirts, various accessories, home decor, stickers, and so much more. In the past, I've gotten a bunch of sweatshirts and t-shirts, all giving that classic nostalgia vibe. And again, all designed by independent artists. And today I bought a bunch of stuff to help funkify the kitchen while we cook. I had a vision for everything, I just hope it works out. First, I grabbed a bunch of these art prints, which I thought would look so cool on the cabinets. And we'll use these others as like a backdrop on the counter. Then I can't not grab some stickers. Look at these ones, Kit T and Cat Puccino. <laughs> and so you can get designs printed on anything. And of course we need a shirt to cook in too. That's better. And then I'm not much of a pin guy, but I saw this latte pin and I just thought it looked so cool. And then grab some others, which I think all together gives a pretty good cooking vibe. And I present to you the Curious Cat Cat Cafe. And you can grab all of this and so, so much more on Redbubble. Just use my code RBCDJColtoons for 15% off your order. And that is all in the description. And thanks again to Redbubble for sponsoring this video. Now let's cook something else up. <laughs> See what I did there? So now that we have a little bit of a theme going on, let's load up this game and see what it has to offer. Powering it on, you are immediately greeted with some food and safety warnings. Not really giving me a confident start to all this. But go right into recipes and this game does not mess around. Because as you probably could have guessed, no gamification of the cooking process whatsoever. It sorts the 245 recipes in various different ways, either by listing them all, sorting by country, or by the ingredients used. And let's poke around here some more and see what they got. All right, let's sort by country. Wow, oh, <laughs> okay, this is a lot. This is a lot going on here, but just clicking around you can click on a country and then you get these nice High res pictures up top. But let's check out different types of recipes and see what would make sense for the curious cat. And let's go up to the US and see how they embody the US here. Show me potato salad. Hey yo! Next, there's some clam chowder. All right. And jambalaya. Okay, not necessarily a staple of the US in my opinion, but all right. Next, mac and cheese. Okay, makes sense. And chicken pot pie. Of course, doesn't get more American than that. And we already saw that there was Peru down here. I don't even know what Peruvian food is, so let's check it out. Ceviche. Honestly, it seems pretty extreme to teach someone how to make some ceviche, especially from a DS. And oh, Yummy potato and egg salad. We also have Argentina, Portugal, Spain, the UK, France, Belgium, Italy, as well as a ton of others. And to be honest, I'm kind of shocked at the amount of diversity there is here. Like mussels with white wine, wiener schnitzel, and goulash. But after looking at all the recipes in here, I decided to go with the Spanish tortilla, the Australian meat pie, and banana brownies. Like I said, I was trying to find things that a cafe would sell, but honestly, most of the recipes on here 
order are elaborate entrees, which the curious cat does not have time for. But after I selected them, it made me this nice shopping list. So let's get out of here and grab what we need. I don't think I've ever walked into a grocery store with a Nintendo DS, let alone use the thing as my actual shopping list. But luckily, no one really questioned it. Also, in case you were wondering, this is what a grocery store looks like in New York City. I feel like everyone thinks they don't exist here, but they do. They are just very dense. But we found mostly everything and I think we're good to go. Well, I guess this is a cooking channel now. And let's get the DS cam up right here, which I have an individual camera down here just for the DS. And I have the Spanish tortilla recipe all loaded up and I think we are ready to get cracked. I went into this pretty confident. I wouldn't say I'm the best cook in the world, but I definitely know my way around the kitchen. So I don't really follow a lot of recipes, so this should still be interesting. Though pretty soon I started to notice something that may get old pretty fast. Every time I talk, it just wants to tell me okay. the next step. Peel the onion. I gotta give it credit for when it was actually made, cause... Okay. Though we did have some nice conversation, nor the mess as we go. Okay. Glad he's on the same page with me, geez. And as it's skipping ahead in steps, it's really hard to even keep track of what step you were on to begin with. Plus, each recipe didn't always restate the exact measurement of the ingredient you needed, causing you to go back and forth or do what I did and just guesstimate how much you actually need. So according to it, this is the preparation we need to do. Obviously, we still need to do the egg, but I guess we are moving on to the frying pan portion, and this thing just won't shut up. It was at this point where I already started to go rogue, cranking the heat, but it had already already sort of misguided me as it wasn't really telling me how long to cook everything for, which for onions, okay. But once I added the potatoes to the pan, it pretty much was telling me to cook them until they were done, which if you were a beginner, that isn't really that helpful. But the Gordon Ramsay in me started to kick in, prepping the egg. Oh yeah, buddy. Oh yeah. Okay, calm down there, Colton. So the potatoes and onions are just about done. And I don't know why I can't just put the eggs in with the potato and onion, but it's telling me to do the opposite of that. But we will follow the instructions so that we have a wonderful dish. But getting to the final steps, I was still being greatly interrupted. And then we take this and according to that, we- Okay, pour the egg and vegetable mixture into the pan. <laughs> And now we're gonna pour this into the pan. But we were really cooking this time. Though once it came to the flip, it was telling me to flip the entire frying pan over onto the lid, which I was incredibly hesitant about, but I pulled it off and I was thoroughly impressed with myself. And after that, it was complete. All right, well, here is our Spanish tortilla. Looks pretty good. I mean, I've had a Spanish tortilla before and it looks similar. Uh, I'm not a professional, but it looks pretty good. We are actually gonna try all of our recipes together. So we will put this to the side and move on to the next one. So, so far, so good. Though moving on to the Australian meat pie was definitely going to be an endeavor I had never experienced before. Now starting this off, things were going decent. I substituted a few ingredients, but nothing too out there and got the filling done pretty seamlessly. Though again, still encountering some of the same gripes I had with the first recipe. I'm having a tough time here, okay? But when it came down to make the actual meat pies, things did not go as planned. See, I'm not sure I got the right dough and then decided to, well, not roll it out either. Okay, that might be on me. But it's then showing me to put them in these little pie tins and this and that. And you think I have many pie tins laying around? So I kind of went with the dumpling method and it went okay until... Guys, I think we have a problem. So I'll show you them in a second. They did not, not turn out like they were supposed to. They cracked everywhere. I also realized that I forgot to take the bay leaf out. So one of them just has a giant bay leaf on it but check these out. Yeah. So I honestly don't even know if they're still done. They smell done, but then you can see this one with the baby sticking out. So I'll let those rest for a little bit and we'll just move on to the next recipe. And now on to the banana brownies. And come on guys, they're brownies. How hard could this be? So I skipped every step and just added everything to the bowl. Put it in the brownie pan with absolutely no trouble. And now I'm excited to show you the delectable offerings at the Curious Cat Cafe. Well, here are the pastries that we made. The Spanish tortilla, the Australian meat pie, and the banana brownies. I have a feeling all these are gonna taste good. No matter how they look, they're all gonna taste good. Let's try. Yeah, you know, maybe if the egg was thicker um, to the amount of potato that's in here. I mean, look at how much potato is just in that one bite. It's like all potato. Worked out okay, I guess. The Australian meat pie. And the first thing we're gonna do with this one is get this giant 
bay leaf out of here. <laughs> and again, I know this is gonna be good, but these really didn't turn out the way that they looked in the picture. But let's try it, the Australian meat pie. That's pretty freaking good. And there is a big clump of dough in the middle. If that wasn't there, this would be like top tier. But I mean, the flavors are still really good. And finally, the banana brownies. Apparently a US staple. Dry, very, very dry. Give me a drug up. I don't know why it's so dry. I don't know, I mean, the oven was set at 400 for like a really long time, so maybe it just didn't cool down in time, but yeah, this is, this is dry as hell. So how was my experience with this? I don't even know what to call it anymore. It was fine. Like I said, I was shocked at the amount of recipes that were on here, though most are pretty elaborate, and then paired that with the simplistic videos of how to cut an onion, and I'm struggling to figure out who this was actually meant for. Like if this is for beginners, that's great, but these are not recipes that I would give to a beginner, especially with the lack of cooking time. Like you can't tell a beginner to just cook a potato until it's done. You have to give them some sort of cooking time as a reference at least. But if this is meant for people that love to cook, then why are you breaking down the simplest steps? And then don't even get me started on the voice command aspect. But let's answer the question, can the DS be used as a cookbook? I guess? I just feel like there are a lot better ways to learn how to cook than use this as your main source of information. And based on what we made, I don't know if the Curious Cat Cafe is ready for prime time anytime soon. Thanks again to Redbubble for sponsoring this video. Use my code RBCDJCOLTUNES for 15% off your order. And as always, thanks for watching. There's always something creepy.